If you're tired of the standard business and marketing fundamentals, frameworks, and funnels, <laughs> you need a little mischief. Get ready to turn up the volume on the CEO Mischief Maker podcast, where you access conversations with seasoned business owners who have smashed through mindset barriers, innovated the standard boring business and marketing playbooks, and executed future-paced strategies with bleeding-edge tools and tactics to micro-fail their way into massive success and growth. We are Mindset Impact Strategic Catalysts, helping innovative entrepreneurs focus. We are CEO Mischief Makers. Ready to make a little mischief? Hey, hey, welcome everybody. I hope you are ready to make some mischief because this guy I get to talk uh, to today, he and I uh, really geek out about a lot of things. So we're going to be making a lot of mischief. Welcome to the conversation, Dwayne Zingale. Uh, Dwayne, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing good. Thanks so much for having me. It's always fun to cause a little mischief, uh, especially when it can cause us to connect. Um, so any anything mischievous and devious that we can do that brings us together. <laughs> I mean, why else did we do mischief when we were young? Albeit, maybe we got in trouble, but now we can do it without getting in trouble. That's but right. anyways, it's, That's right. it's super fun to be here. Yeah, thank you. And it wasn't it always fun to be mischievous with someone else? It's no fun doing it alone. I mean, we gotta yeah. we gotta go make some mischief in the world. My husband asks me every day, you know, you staying out of mischief, you staying out of trouble. I'm like, hell no. <laughs> Why would I do that? <laughs> I'm just oh. gonna do the trouble that doesn't get me in trouble with the law. That's hey, never, never. The only time I did that was when I actually <laughs> ran away from home. But that's another story. <laughs> But anyway, welcome to the conversation. Just in case there are people uh, listening to us or watching us who don't know who you are, um, tell tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do. Yeah, absolutely. So Dwayne Zingali, uh, first and foremost, I love being a husband and a dad. I don't know, call me mischievous, but I run a dig digital marketing consultancy to help people really lay out a marketing narrative and then build a funnel around that. And I call it marketing your movement. Uh, and I really consult people who see themselves as leaders who want to get out there and communicate a message and narrative that leads people in a direction of impact uh, and transforming society. And I believe marketing is the beginning of that communication. Uh, and alongside of that, I get a champion, my wife leading her own movement. Um, and so I may be a main character in a series of children's books. Okay, let's face it, my, <laughs> my daughter is the main character, but yes. my ego is big enough to try and insert myself in there. So yeah, that's a little <laughs> bit of my world. I don't know how to pick one thing, so I have a handful. I know, isn't that great? So I think that's the toughest part for most of us, like who are kind of like you and I. We, there, once, once we get our jaws onto and we bite onto something that's really exciting, uh, there's something else that comes along we want to bite into too. And so we got to go follow that too. It's so hard to focus on just one thing. So thank you for that. Um, and obviously you've used all the incredible buzzwords that we are going to use in this conversation, impact and all that stuff. So let's just dive in. And I know uh, from your perspective, just given what little I know of your background, um, I think mindset has played a huge role in the evolution of not just your business, but your life. Um, would you agree with that? Uh, to say the least, yes, it has played an incredible role uh, in leading me in the direction I've gone over the last several years. Yeah. And what, tell me a little bit about um, a time when you really had to change your mindset in order to um, either do what you wanted to do or go in a new direction that you wanted to go into or, uh, you know, any, anything that impacted your life. When, give me a story of when mindset really yeah. had to shift for you and how did you shift it? So I lived a past life long before being a digital marketer and championing leaders. Um, I was in a role in the nonprofit world known as a Christian missionary, and we raised our own donations. And when we were having our second daughter who has the same cranial facial syndrome that I do, um, life suddenly needed a lot more income than that which I could raise. And I was okay at it, uh, but I had this mindset and belief uh, about not only poverty was necessary to go change the world, but 
that actually that was something to be proud of sort of a, a saint francis of assisi attitude i still adore the stories about saint francis of assisi but poverty was a big celebrated mindset and so one might say i had pride in my poverty and i didn't realize i was actually limiting my impact as a christian missionary um, and actually severely like restricting my ability to really change people's lives uh, and when i was having my second daughter we we were taken to Doran Becker Hospital in Portland, Portland, which is four hours from our home in Bend uh, when we lived there. And so suddenly it's like, OK, where do we stay? Oh, my God, a hotel. I don't have that kind of income. I can't pay you. Um, um, and, you know, just the sheer anxiety of where do we stay tonight? Who's going to watch our oldest daughter? Um, well, who now is the oldest daughter? She didn't have a younger sister born yet, but she was in the womb. Yeah. And and so that kind of exploded in our face and thank god there was this thing called the ronald mcdonald house a nonprofit that really knew how to raise funds to service its impact and so i didn't realize it at the time but even that was laying up but during that time of a month in the Don ronald mcdonald house which happened to be out of the marriott hotel uh <laughs> run by a really brilliant group, not that we always agree religiously, but the Marriott's actually owned by the uh, the Utah folks. Why is it the um, Church Mormon. of the Latter-day Saints? Yeah, mm -hmm. Mormons. Mm -hmm. And uh, and because they understand making money, we're able to serve the Ronald McDonald House. And during that time, I decided to read Think and Grow Rich. For what reason? I don't know. I had <laughs> no idea why I picked up that book. I'm a Christian missionary. I have no concept around business, although we did say we wanted to start doing business overseas. Well, like, how can we have an impact by helping people have jobs and create their own jobs? That's one thing I understood being American from my experiences that entrepreneurship creates income and those who can create it for themselves can then start hiring people. And there's nothing more needed and impactful than a source of income on a day to day basis. Uh, and in that moment, I began having the aha of, oh, Maybe I shouldn't have so much pride in my poverty. And as my daughter was born and a week in the NICU, that kind of like began bubbling up more and more and more. And by the time they let us go home and said, hey, here's your daughter. And you're like, oh, crap. What kind of things do we need to be able to afford for these special needs such as cleft palate uh, later to become hearing aids? These these bone anchored hearing aids are not cheap and affordable. And you know, thank goodness, uh, you know, the medical system of Oregon was really good. And so we didn't necessarily have to go without hearing aids, but uh, I'm never one to pride myself on needing the government, uh, especially long term. And so that really brought a punch in the face. And then I began this journey of interviewing about 50 managers, business owners, anybody in a decision making level who did anything in the business world, just going, who are you? What do you do? What are your biggest problems? And is there a problem I could help solve? Just, I didn't know that was a smart thing to do in terms of being a contractor or a freelancer. It was just some suggested things to do by a really good friend of mine as stuff hit my fan. And I ended up meeting a fellow who ran an e-commerce store serving uh, fire station search and rescue teams with their equipment through right, selling ropes and pulleys and all these cool things. And being a climber, I was fascinated. Uh, and then I, you know, you begin having the business conversations. You're like, oh, this is why Napoleon Hill was talking about money this way. Oh, this, you know, started connecting the dots. And, and that's, the layup into discovering people needed marketing help. And for some reason, I was actually good at that. But yeah, shifting from like money is impact and realizing how much impact my first client was able to have as he increased his top line and bottom line, his impact was able to grow and just be, whether he's able to sell more, right? The more he can sell, the more people are getting rescued, the more people can have fun and take these risks and the more firefighters we can put out on the field. Uh, and so it's just kind of this cascading effect of people making income being a, a beautiful thing. So that was by far the biggest mindset, mindset shift. I'll try not to curse about this uh, in my life. 
<laughs> um, so I, I love when you talk about this because you're you're talking about poverty to purpose or poverty to profit and lots of these other, I love alliteration, obviously. I, the words are just amazing for me. But uh, that shift from having that pride in poverty and shifting to, wait a minute, if I want to make an impact in the world, I need money to do it. And I want to take care of my family and I need money to do that. And I can help other people shift their mindsets around their impact as well. So, I mean, it, it all, it all starts with that, right? Indeed. Yeah, it really does. And, and to, to kind of lay it up, uh, you know, we'll probably get to it in a further episode, but one of the pieces of my framework is E for empower and it shifts the whole narrative. And this was the shift I had when I started, actually, when I first bought my first course from Ray Edwards. Um, and I think my, my came a few people, right? Your first courses, you start dabbling into this world and you discover, oh, this is so much more powerful than a college education. And I realized because I gave my hard earned, and you better believe how hard earned this was at this point, $2,000 still shocks me that we can charge this much for just training material. Um, but that really got me to take some actions. And I turned that $2,000 into a lot more than $2,000 for a client. And that really honed in, like, this is empowering. And, and the reason even going back into that being empowering is I used to go to Nepal with friends of mine, and we had a whole leadership development program. And we would go and say, hey, come, and we'd recruit, and we'd have 30 people show up the first day. And we'd have this incredible time. And everybody's like, wow, I learned so much. Can't wait to see you tomorrow. What happens tomorrow? A whole new group of 20, 30 people. And you're like, oh, great. And then there's like five from yesterday, maybe 10. And we're like, well, we got to start at the beginning. Well, guess who didn't come the, the third day? All the other people who heard the first teaching again, they're like, mm, it's just going to be the first teaching again. And it's a whole new group with some from the first day on the third day. And that just continued for five, six days. And we realized we couldn't get past day one. And so we decided to charge $10. Now, $10 in Nepal is a lot more than just $10. So let's put it at that. And these people decided to pay $10 and hike miles across the Himalayas, right? This is no yeah. easy to hike terrain in the middle of nowhere. This isn't Kathmandu, you know, where it, outside of Pokhara and interesting thing happened. They all came to the first day and because they gave $10, they also came the second day and the third day and the fourth day and the fifth day. And they got the whole five day leadership training in which we could of course say, Hey, we're going to come back in several months. Would you like to make sure you're signed up to get notified when we come? It'll be another, you know, $10. Would you like to secure your spot? Guess what some people did? They secured their spot because it empowered them to get through all the material and take action and really grow. Uh, and, and that was the big mindset shift from pro poverty and then really beginning to implement. And, and of course, I did that in my missions days, but didn't, didn't connect the realizing. dots for my own life. Mm -hmm. and, and now realizing, oh, this is what we're doing when we're selling ethically. We're empowering yeah. people to make a powerful decision. And there's nothing more committed than giving your hard earned dollars. And you're like, okay, I did this. I better go do the work to mm. put this course into action and serve my clients, serve my business, serve my family, whatever it may be, whatever it's training you to do. Wow. Uh, so yeah, wow. that, uh, that is a big, 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 big shift yeah. in the sales conversation. That I had. Absolutely. And first off, I've got to say, wow, I'm so jealous. I can't, I really, really would love to visit Nepal. Um, I just, I'm drawn to that area. I would love to go to uh, the city of Lhasa and I would just, it would just be an incredible journey. Um, but going back to this mindset idea, I mean, what an amazing, so like you said, you just said a minute ago that you did this in ministry. You, you, helped empower people um, through the ministry work and the nonprofit work you did, but really hadn't done it for yourself and your own business and furthering your own, your own uh, efforts. What, what did it take to really get over that whole poverty idea or, and, and not just the poverty idea, but what did it take to switch from, you understand what to do for someone else, but then to be able to put that 
that mirror up to your face and point those fingers back to yourself and see what you need to change. Um, and you also mentioned it's just a course. Oh my gosh, that course changed your life. That course changed that leadership course in Kathmandu, changed the lives of all those people. A course is one of the most powerful things if we if we participate, right? Like you, like you talked about. Exactly. So, all right. I asked you a lot of different things in that one question, but let's focus on just <laughs> the, the thought of being able to do this for someone else and then being able to turn that to yourself. What, what shift needed to happen for you to do that? So it's far from one shift. Um, yeah. It's been a series of shifts and I'm still shifting um, <laughs> up until that last. And, and so, so to put that right, we're even dabbling in, oh, I'm still shifting my mind because I myself have yet to create a course. Now, part of that is creative energy, but part of it is how much are you willing to pay yourself to hang out with you? Uh, and, and that was a, a big stop gap in the last conference. I went and my, my mentor, Mike, asked that question. I'm like, huh, would I pay to be with me? I would pay to get my knowledge. I would pay to have me do stuff. And so that's me today, like really kind of like, well, yeah, it's not just a course, it's me getting in people's lives um, and, and really believing that, yes, even my recorded content without me there can have an impact. And so that's kind of me today and still shifting that prosperous, charging and to empower you attitude. Uh, and some of the key events, of course, the first one just sheer need, right? Desperation. Yeah. I have to make money to help my daughter, right? That was kind of the layup story. One of the first things beyond that, that really began to shift that was actually hiring my first contractor and really understanding the empowering effect of, hey, we're having this great exchange. That's not a win-lose, it's a win-win and -win. really having this small experience of paying somebody a few hundred dollars to do something to my website so I could stop designing because I'm not, I may be a marketer, but I am not a designer. Um, I'm a technician and, and a narrative guy. And so that exchange really began building like, oh, oh, this is the kind of relationships we can have and beginning to see the business game as working collaboratively collaboratively with other contractors, other people servicing pe people. And I think that's what drew me into the coaching, consulting, leadership development space was we tend to think collaboratively. And this was in many ways a natural step because that was the ministry life. You did ministry collaboratively when I did it. It's not to say people don't get competitive in that world. So that was probably one of the biggest shifts there. Uh, and then I mean, at this point, I, I'm not remiss to say I've probably spent over $40,000 on courses and co coaching alone, let alone consulting and done for you services. Uh, and every time I do it correctly, <laughs> it works really well. And so then appreciating profit is when you don't do it well, which was then another lesson in, oh, thinking about how you're making money is kind of a big deal when you're going to spend money. So yeah, similar to hiring a contractor, but how am I spending this money as an investment to grow my impact, right? And the only reason I'm in business is impact, which we'll talk more about. But even in that thinking, right? Okay, this is investment for impact. And my impact happens to be able to help other people, other leaders have an impact through their mission. And you know, a lot of those small layups, and then of course, kind of leading to where I am now realizing, oh, I too have courses, accelerators, masterminds, people can pay me for just my brain and not my skill set of I'll solve any technical problem you ever think you can come up with on the digital marketing world. So it, it's a journey for sure. Wow. And that's really, I think for, especially for us who like to dabble in tech and we like to play with these and tinker with these softwares um, to really take and, and go beyond that, beyond the technician frame, because there's a ceiling in a technician. Um, you're basically just staying within the confines of whatever it is you're playing with, right? The software itself, but to go beyond that and actually strategize with it and actually look at solutions beyond just the use of that tech and how it fits into the bigger picture of a business. That's the next mindset shift for most technicians. And it's difficult because they, they specifically um, 
identify themselves with that particular software or tech. And to get out of that is scary because it's much easier to stay within the boundaries of the tech technology and say, well, it can do this or it can do that and that's it. But then when you start strategizing and adding other pieces and marketing and, and, you know, let's see this funnel or this particular launch or going beyond just what the tech can do is scary stuff. So I love what you said about collaborating because when I hired my first person, it felt the same way. There was someone else that I could collaborate with and talk to about what, it, what we were doing together and building together. Um, Wow. All right. I can't wait to dive into the next piece of our conversation because I know you have an incredible uh, uh, amount to give, incredible stories about impact and innovation. So thank you for chatting about mindset. And uh, for those of you listening, I can't wait to see you on Wednesday to hear the rest of the story. Okay, hold on. If your mindset was shifted, you were inspired to innovate and you were spurred into action, don't just move on with your day. Focus, my friend, and take a few minutes to visit ceomischiefmaker.com to learn more about the value that was shared with you today. Please act now and create some CEO mischief of your own.